Welcome STAT students and instructors! You're about to see three ways to calculate the correlation coefficient, r, and the correlation of determination, which is r squared. The three ways are by hand, so you can see how the formula works, by using a TI-84 calculator, and the third way is by using built-in functions of a spreadsheet. And for those of you who care about such things, you can pause the video if you need to. Let's see how to calculate the correlation coefficient manually, step by step. Instead of handwriting every calculation, we will be using a spreadsheet. We're starting with some paired quantitative data. These are the number of mobile phone and personal computers in a given household, and we have a sample size of eight. The data is in ascending order. As you will see, it is in no way important or required to be in ascending order. We'll start with calculating the mean of the phone count data, and we will also need to calculate the sample standard deviation. Next, in this light blue area, we are doing two calculations. First, we will subtract the mean from the x value. In this case, 7 minus 23 is negative 16. Then, we divide that by 15.991. This is the arithmetic that is happening inside the set of parentheses. It's actually a z-score. Notice that little subscripted i? It means that every individual data value in the x column will follow these arithmetic operations, which means subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. Using a spreadsheet like this makes easy work of calculating all eight values. Regarding the second column for PCs, we follow the same procedure. Calculate the mean, the sample standard deviation, use them in the calculations for each Y value. The values from these two columns are multiplied together to make a column of products. If you are wondering what that uppercase Greek letter sigma does, it means add all the numbers together. And below, we have a summation of each of these numbers. At this point, Everything we've done has come down to a single number, and there is only one more arithmetic operation to do, which is here. Multiply this number by the inverse of one less than the number of data. And since we have eight paired data, that means we multiply by one seventh. There it is, in all its glory, the correlation coefficient. The coefficient of determination is calculated by squaring. Now that you know how to calculate the correlation coefficient by hand, you know that it is a lot of work. The procedure you're about to see is nearly identical for these Texas Instruments calculators, the TI-83+, the TI-84+, including the Silver Edition, and the T84 plus CE, including the Python edition. We will use the same data from the previous example. An unusual feature of the TI graphing calculators is that the R and R squared values won't be displayed unless the calculator is in diagnostic mode. Why is this? I have no idea, and it's not difficult to activate the mode and just never worry about it ever again. It doesn't hurt anything to keep it on. Start by pressing the blue second key, followed by the zero on the lowest row of the keypad. Press the inverse X key. Use the downward directional arrow key to scroll to Diagnostic On, and press the Enter key to select, and press the Enter key again to commit. That's it. You're good to go. Here's how to enter the data. Press the Stat key choose enter and you will see a screen that allows you to view and edit the lists used in statistics calculations. If you happen to have old data from a different problem already in your lists, you can simply use the directional arrow key to select the column heading, press the clear key once, and then press the enter key to commit the action of clearing. And now we have a blank list. If you have a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator in front of you as you watch this video, try to follow along and pause where you need to. After the data has been entered, press the STAT key. 
use the right arrow to select the calculation menu, and then select number four, linear regression. Make sure list one and list two are designated, and then select calculate. The bottom value R is the correlation coefficient. Last, let's see how to use the built-in function provided by most spreadsheets. For this video, we will be using Microsoft Excel. However, everything you see done in Microsoft Excel can be done in a very similar way using Google Spreadsheets. For the purpose of this demonstration, the data doesn't need to have column headings, but you will need the data in two separate columns. And here is the data in columns A and B. You can put the formula in any cell you wish. We'll just put it here. The formula uses a function called Corel, which takes two arrays of data. Just specify range of the cells, A1 to A8, with a colon in between. And the second range is B1 to B8. There's the correlation coefficient. And it's simple enough to find the square of that value. Just enter a formula where you take the cell to the power 2. Use the caret symbol to indicate an exponent. There is a way to see the R squared value by creating a scatter plot of the data. This time, we'll use a Google spreadsheet. The steps are nearly identical in Microsoft Excel. Select both columns of data, go to the Insert menu, and choose Chart. The default chart is a column chart, so change the chart type to Scatter Plot. In the Chart Editor sidebar, select the tab Customize and expand Series. Scroll down and place a check mark in Trend Line. Once Trend Line is selected, you have the option of displaying the R squared value directly on the chart. The default number of digits is rounded to two decimal places. I'm not sure how to increase the number of digits, and if your chart is for display purposes, it might not matter. Spreadsheet charts with trend lines only allow you to display R squared. And at first I was thinking, this is unfair. But then it dawned on me. If you're looking at a scatter plot, especially with a trend line to help guide the eye, it's obvious if the correlation is positive or negative. That means you don't need to specify if the value is positive or negative. And that means you can just square the R value and slightly simplify how you're communicating the direction of the data. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave a comment. I'm always making new videos, so stay tuned.